Hello, I'm Frank Lund. I started off my working life in electronics as a technician at Southampton University and uh, working on nuclear experiments and one project that I got involved with used a PDP-8 computer. It was the first bought in the United Kingdom from uh, digital equipment when it uh, Hennessy's was just a, a room above a furniture shop in Reading. The uh, system we had used uh, flip chip modules to uh, digitise images from a uh, Vidicon camera, very different from the uh, technology that's in the camera that's taking a, the, the, the digital image of me now. And uh, I got uh, involved with various uh, other computer projects. I've uh, worked with the dreaded PC. I've uh, programmed uh, assorted PIC microcontrollers. But uh, things that are interested in me are uh, older computing solutions, such as that used in this uh, Mark IV air position indicator or the uh, Mark 1 ground position indicator and Mark 1 ground, uh, ground position indicator and air position indicator that uh, used analog computing methods, mechanical analogs. So the Type M communication is uh, used on this unit for compass direction. I can demonstrate it on this small piece of electronics. You can see the uh, compass needle moving backwards and forwards as I rotate the knob. The same, the same type M is used for air mileage input and so I just switch it over to continuous and wind up the speed and uh, now it is uh, counting up mileage so here we can see that I'm increasing the speed of the air mileage that's coming through the Type M communication and because the mileage is, has east and west components and north-south components you can see that two um, lots of gears are running at different rates. So this unit has a form of mechanical memory. It's been running for a while counting up uh, the mileage north and south in the fixed mode. If I now switch it back to normal mode, the uh, lights here are showing that it's got some count in its memory. I switch it back to normal and uh, a motor will make the counters catch up. That was a very short uh, run. So here we see the mileage being slowly counted up on the gears that are at the left but uh, the gears at the right are stationary at the moment as the mileage is put into memory. When I switch from fixed back to normal the motor will start and uh, drive the counters to catch up. The counters have now caught up. Okay. This is the Mark I surface movement corrector which feeds into uh, other instruments so that it takes account of the drift due to wind. This knob will set the wind speed at that's a ball and roller 
a simple ball and roller that's acting like a, an infinitely variable gearbox on which the wind speed is set when driven by a constant speed motor setting the heading then resolves that speed into uh, the north, south and east, west components by the two other ball and roller mechanisms that you've already seen. This is just a, a simple demonstration of deriving the north, south and east, west components of an aircraft movement according to its heading. So I'll just start turning the heading round and you can see how the ball is moving over the disc to connect different parts of the disc and different amounts and directions of rotation to the roller which is actually giving the output of the speed in the north-south and east-west directions and we're back to north again. This is the Mark I air position indicator as developed during the Second World War. Its job is to tell the navigator how far he's moved in uh, east, west and north, south directions in the lump of air that his aircraft is in. It's not taking account of the movement of that lump of air. This is the Mark I air position indicator. Through this connection it receives a rotating signal uh, from a cable, very much like the speedometer cable of old cars. That drive then turns two discs here. With each disc there is a ball which is tightly fixed between the disc and a roller. The position of the ball with respect to its disc and its roller is determined by the north-south and east-west component of the heading so that uh, as the disc is turned by the air mileage unit the rate at which the roller turns is determined by how far the aircraft is heading north-south how far it's heading in the east-west direction and uh, that would be uh, fine if we were just living on a, a square but we're living on a curved planet so in fact as it goes as we go further and further away from the equator the distance in air miles is converted into latitude, longitude and uh, near the equator then uh, one minute of longitude is equivalent to one nautical mile but when we go further north or south then uh, one nautical mile gives more than one minute of arc and uh, this other ball and uh, roller mechanism takes the north it uses the north-south position to multiply the east-west movement according to uh, one upon the cosine of the latitude Okay, we'll start our journey by going north. So I'll wind up the rate of the air miles and uh, you now see that the 
North counter is counting up nicely and let's now turn towards the east the air the north-south mileage now stops moving and the uh, east-west counter starts counting Okay. Turn it to the south and it starts counting down from north and heading towards the south. Right, that's the uh, air position indicator which effectively tells you how your position is in your local block of air by uh, looking at the air mileage from a, a motor that repeats the distance measured by the air mileage unit. This is the Mark 1 ground position indicator and it indicates the position on the ground by showing an arrow with a, a crossbar on it to show the navigator where they are on the map that's on the map table onto which the arrow is projected that is you <coughs> so here we see the arrow that uh, is projected from the ground position indicator onto the navigator's map that instrument takes inputs from the air position indicator which tells the navigator where they've gone in that particular lump of air. The only problem is that this lump of air is moving about due to wind. So this unit has a wind correction function and uh, that's turned on now and you can see that that dial is slowly turning by itself driven by a constant speed motor that takes account of the wind direction and the wind speed as set on these two dials. This is a heading indicator and position indicator that the navigator, the wartime navigator would see from the ground position indicator mark one as you can see I when I turn the heading input the compass units show a different heading and uh, this is uh, the heading indicator is turning so it is now pointing roughly uh, southeast remember it's upside down because the way the unit would be mounted in front of the navigator with north being downwards that's why the cushion's upside down so that the navigator can align his map with the motion of the projected index from the ground position indicator there's a small lever that moves the index in an east-west direction and uh, the navigator can then turn his map to align with that direction of movement.